All right, for today's video review, we're gonna be taking a look at Transformers Buzzworthy Bumblebee Legacy Autobot Silver Streak. Yes, that's right. We're taking a look at another new legacy figure, though uh, not the uh, anticipated ones, um, because like technically this is part of Buzzworthy Bumblebee, but Buzzworthy Bumblebee does that weird thing where they have, you know, sort of like sub lines within it that are other actual lines. So it's characterized as a legacy figure. And I, I don't know, it's a generations figure. <laughs> I don't know what else you want. But uh, yeah, we've got Silver Streak here. And it's uh, it's kind of funny that they've decided to, uh, to name him Silver Streak. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what this character is, uh, basically this is an alternate color scheme for Blue Streak, who uh, originally like, you know, obviously Blue Streak is a uh, not blue he's like silver and black and the uh the original like diaclone version of the mold there was one that was more this color scheme with the actual blue and it showed up in like some of the advertising for the g1 toys even though you couldn't actually buy a blue blue streak in the g1 toy line it was only the the, the silver ones and i i'm assuming that Probably the reference material of the Diaclone color scheme might have been what they were looking at when they named him Blue Streak, because it's always been kind of a weird thing that, uh, you know, his name is Blue Streak and he's not, you know, blue at all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, I, it, it's really a fun kind of Diaclone uh, color scheme reference because like, uh, also, where the name Silver Streak comes from is like a while for a while when they're making new versions of Blue Streak, they didn't have the trademark for the name Blue Streak. So they were calling the toys Silver Streak instead, which, you know, like you're probably familiar with with like a lot of the other characters, you know, like they didn't have Shrapnel for a while. So he was Scrapnel, you know, just like having to name them different things on the packaging so they could still give you the characters you want, even if they didn't have the trademark. So it's kind of funny that they've decided to take the Silver Streak name and give it to the blue version of Blue Streak. So now the guy named Blue Streak is not blue and the guy named Silver Streak is, well, I guess he's got a little bit of silver, but he's primarily blue. So they just kind of swapped names there. I think that's a, a really clever use of that uh, that name. And it's a kind of a funny thing to make it a new character. Uh, in my mind, like this is still like, in my sort of like head canon, I consider him like maybe a alternate universe version of Blue Streak that maybe got trapped on the uh the regular you know like main world with all the other characters and then maybe one of the autobots made a joke about you know because they couldn't call them both blue streak they decided to call him silver streak to make fun of the fact that you know blue streak is silver and not blue i don't know that's just kind of my head canon thing for how they exist together because it doesn't really feel like you know doesn't feel different enough to have them be two completely different unrelated characters, you know, not like Prowl and Blue Streak who share a mold, but are very different identities. So Blue Streak and Silver Streak are still pretty close. But anyway, that's enough uh, rambling. Uh, obviously he comes with the same weapons that he, uh, that pretty much every other version of the mold has, the two little uh, cannons here and the uh, the bigger one. Um, in terms of storage, it's the same thing with like all of the Earthrise figures is that, you know, their storage is just pegging guns onto the top of cars, which I don't like, but um, you've got a few options. You can stick them out of the hood right here, which is where they end up being like shoulder cannons in robot mode, and then take this one up here. And as a weaponized car mode, I think that looks pretty cool. Um, but again, you know, I'd prefer there be some option to uh, hide them away. You can also take these and peg them onto the side of the bigger gun to have uh, that look going on. Also cool. Um, with some versions of this mode, like, you can sort of, like, since there is this cavity down here, you can sort of, like, wedge the, the gun in here. Um, it, it does not stay particularly well, uh, but it, it's possible if you just maneuver it enough. Um, so you could store the, the main weapon like that, and, I mean, I, maybe you could cram those in there too, but there's no way these are staying in there. But, you know, it, it can work if you're willing to work with it, but it's definitely not a very uh, tight connection. But, uh, yeah, in terms of comparisons, just for the standard one, here he is with Kingdom Sideswipe. 
even though really, I mean, <laughs> you're just as likely to have a version of this mold than this one at this point, since they've done him a bunch of times as well. And then let's bring in, uh, first of all, Blue Streak. So you can see what Blue Streak and Silver Streak look like together. And they look pretty good. Uh, thankfully, I mean, Blue Streak is still the only version of this mold that I have this problem with, with the, uh, the, the roof kind of sticking up like that. And he does not have that issue. It's definitely nice and flush there. Um, but that's what they look like together. And then we can bring in Prowl and Smokescreen and Barricade. So you can see all of the uh, the not Datsuns together. And it's a, you know, pretty good lineup. Um, in terms of transformation, obviously it's exactly the same as uh, every other version of this mold. Um, I do find that on this one, like, I have a hard time keeping this door in place sometimes. Like, usually once it stays, it's okay, but it, it does take a bit of doing to actually pop it in place because sometimes it'll want to, like, pop back out. Of course, it's not doing it now, but just take my word for it. Um, but, yeah, first thing you want to do is untab the door there on both sides and then just open them up like that. Then you can grab his arms, fold them down like this, and then fold them out to the side then uh, bend it over like this, and you wanna take the, uh, the bottom section of the legs here, and it's pretty tight on this version of it, but maybe it'll loosen up a little bit over time. But you wanna just split this section, oof, not quite like that, but split, <laughs> split this section and bring it down and then unfold him at the knees here. Then it already did it on mine, but unpeg, unpeg the legs from each other. Then you can take this little uh, white panel here. It's just like kind of a filler just to like hide the hollowness of his feet, but you can rotate those down, rotate down the heels from the side here. Adjust the camera a little bit. All right. Um, then you can rotate him around at the waist, rotate him around at the head here. Take this uh, front panel on the front of the car and push that in. We focused. There we go. Uh, and then bring the whole thing down. Make sure the arms are up for this part. You want to double hinge this section down and make sure that these like parts of the uh, the wheel well go behind these little tabs on the white armature body section. And then just feed his head through that slot there and then just lock it in like that. And then bring the, uh, the panels that the arms are on down and they'll lock into the body like that. And then you can bring his arms down the rest of the way there. And there you have Silver Streak in his robot mode. And yeah, he looks really slick. A, a really nice representation of these uh, more diaclone colors. The blue, the silver, the little yellow head crest there. I think it all really pops, which is, you know, I, I haven't really been going in on the other like diaclone referential uh, color schemes that they've been putting out, like Lift Ticket, who is, you know, the diaclone colors of uh, of the Hoist mold, or Guard, which is, you know, the diaclone colors of the Ironhide and Ratchet mold. Uh, you know, it's, they look like the nice figures and, you know, I'm kind of, I'm happy that it exists, but, you know, when I, when I have to buy so much for my collection, I, I kind of get a little picky and choosy, but this is the one that I definitely did want just because like one of the funny things too is like when I was a kid and I was kind of like doing my research on G1 and that was around the time of like all of the, uh, you know, Blue Streak molds being named Silver Streak. I actually thought that Blue Streak and Silver Streak were two completely different characters. So now it's kind of fun just as like a reference to what I thought as a kid. So now they actually can be. And they're they're swapped how the how the names probably ought to be, which I think is still pretty funny. But uh yeah, in terms of uh his weapons, obviously uh you know, you can plug them in back up here to have give him those uh those shoulder cannons like you can with pretty much every other version of this mold and then give him the, the uh, main gun here. Or of course you could have him hold these as separate pistols that also works or plug them onto the side. You've got some options. I, you know, I tend to put these off to the side in a box just because of how they don't really store in vehicle mode, but at least there are some kind of fun things you can do with those. And in terms of storage in this mode, he does have the, uh, the hole on the back here that you can just plug that whole section into and store it that way. And that works well enough. Um, in terms of articulation, if you have any other version of this mold, you know exactly what you're getting into. The, uh, the head is on a ball joint and rotate all the way around. The, the shoulders, they do have this joint, which kind of untabs them from the, uh, the side section here. And then a separate hinge joint 
I can get this to tab back in and like misalign somehow. There we go. And then a separate hinge joint on the shoulder itself so it can go out to the side. So it's nice to kind of have those options. You can use two different shoulder things there. I wish that this joint was a little bit less tight than, or uh, was, yeah, was less tight than this joint so that, you know, it was uh, it, it, like, Okay, now it's working just fine. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, usually when I move the arm out to the side, it tends to do that and and untab. Um, whereas uh, I'd like to just, you know, by default, move it at that joint there. But it seems to be working okay on this side now. Uh, <laughs> can rotate all the way around as well. He's got a bicep swivel uh, over 90 degrees of bend at the elbow. He's got a wrist swivel, which is nice. He's got a waist cut. The, uh, the hips can go forward very far and back and out to the side. He's got a thigh swivel, a very deep knee bend because of how it works for transformation, how, you know, his leg is mostly hollow, which, you know, I, I like that it gives him extra articulation, but, and I don't usually mind hollow parts. It does bother me on this mold a little bit just because you can kind of see through his legs a little bit, but eh, whatever. And then his ankles can tilt out to the side and they can tilt forward a little bit more than just a st up upright standing position, then tilt back obviously a lot for transformation. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's pretty good foot articulation. So you can usually get him pretty flat footed in whatever uh, position you're having him stand in. And uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's nothing new. I've, you've got five other versions of, no, four other versions, five total of this mold. So it's uh, nothing new, but it is a very well articulated figure. In terms of comparisons, just for the standard one, here he is with Kingdom Sideswipe again. And then here he is with Prowl and smoke screen and barricade and most importantly blue streak just so you can see all of them together and there's some uh you know lots of nice color schemes here um obviously like in terms of blue streak and silver streak they actually do look quite different so you know if you want them to just be two separate characters their color schemes really don't share a lot in common with each other like obviously they're the same mold but like you know so is prowl so whatever it, it still works out pretty well. Oh, actually, wait, I, he, I, I'm i just noticing this now. Even though he's got the head from uh, from Prowl and Blue Streak, he actually has the uh, the chest bumper from Barricade and Smokescreen. Look at that. That's neat. I don't know why they decided to do that, because to be the most accurate, he would be the same thing as uh, as Blue Streak here. But that's kind of neat. He's got the, uh, the Blue Streak or the... Uh, God, all of their names, these because he's blue too. Uh, <laughs> he's got the smoke screen and barricade bumper there. That's neat. I did not notice that before. But uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much all there is to, to this figure. It's a, a nice Diaclone reference. I love the color scheme just because I just, I don't know. I think it's very pretty. It's a very pretty color scheme. And I, I love the kind of joke, I guess, there. I don't know if it's meant to be a joke or not, but naming him Silver Streak and then, you know, having him stand aside Blue Streak and, you know, He's the blue one and he's named Silver Streak and he's the silver one and he's named Blue Streak. I just think it's funny. I don't know. It tickles me a little bit. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much all there is to them. If you enjoy my videos, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. I do reviews every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Without further ado, here we have Transformers Buzzworthy Bumblebee Legacy Autobot Silver Streak.